You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of All Time 11 right here on SN Media. I'm Scott McPike, delighted to be your host as always. We've got a very special guest in this week's episode, delighted to be joined by the manager of Stirling Albion, Kevin Rukiewicz. Kevin, it's an absolute pleasure to be on the show, thanks very much for joining me. No, oh, thanks for having me. Brown, how are we? Hi, um, all good in uh, this weird and wonderful time, but uh, aye, aye, it looks like we're getting there then, it looks like we're not quite getting uh, there. I know, I know, it's, it's a bad thing, but listen, fingers crossed, it's... Uh, no going to get any worse than it currently is, but um, I hope everybody's all right out there. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, four games into the season with Stirling, two wins, two defeats. Obviously, the fourth years won your first game, defeats to Annan and Kelty, then obviously an impressive result against Dunra last weekend. How, are you, how have you found the season so far? Um, really good. Listen, we, we had a wee flat spot, obviously, you know, as you said, there are two games. We were flat, we weren't really great, but we've lost three games out of eight, you know, and, and that's yeah. including that. A very, very tough sort of Premier Sport or Premier Cup group, you know. So, so all in all, you know, we're, we're relatively happy. I don't like losing any game. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's no, certainly no any panic stations or any crisis. Um, some fans will tell you different, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, no, listen, we're, we're quite positive where we're at. And, and it's important now that, you know, we start to lay the foundations of... You know, as the season sort of gets a wee bit deeper, we start to lay the foundations and the bases where we're going to be. So we'll be hoping for some some, some positive results and picking up some points over the course of the next six or seven games. And and that will probably, probably paint a truer picture of where, you know, everybody will be in Scottish football. So, yeah. so I hopefully we can start, you know, getting on a wee bit of a run. Definitely. What's the kind of ambitions this season? Like, what's, where's the kind of targets for the, what do you kind of set yourself this season? Where do you see the club kind of come make? Aye, within within the walls of our own house, you know, we, we always want to, you know, be the best, you know, within our own sort of league, if you like. Um, and that that's always the target, you know, striving to improve. But we certainly want to be, you know, up amongst the hierarchy of this league. Um, you know, my ambition is to win every game and every competition that we take part in. Um, and, and, and hopefully, you know, over the course of the season, what we've got is a strong squad, you know. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt about that. We've got a strong squad in, in paper and, that, and I can happily accept the responsibility that comes with that, you know, um, the expectation level as well. Um, it is one of the strongest squads that, that I've been involved with as a manager and a coach. And so hopefully, you know, we can find a way that, that gets the best out of it. But as I say, my aim is to win everything and, and, and win every game that I take part in. I would be much more comfortable giving you a, giving you a, a prediction or an answer come <laughs> February or March maybe, yeah. but... But right now, you know, my total concentration is just winning tomorrow, uh, yeah. Scott. And, and from there, you know, we'll, we'll just, as I say, we'll, we'll see what that takes. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you've been in the job for three years. Three years ago, the world was a different place. What's the kind of differences? Obviously, we know the kind of main difference are COVID things like that. But how is, how you kind of found your three years since you started in management? Um, well, I've actually not had a full season as a manager yet. No. Um, it, it's been, I've had a very steep, and, and weird learning curve as a manager, if you like, you know, I've, I've probably had to deal with, well, we've all had to deal with things that we've never been thrown at us before. Yeah. And as a young manager, you know, I've had to deal with a lot more outside of the, the footballing bubble, if you like. Um, so that, that's been interesting. <laughs> it's probably the best word I could use it. Uh, I could probably use a few other ones, like <laughs> and rubbish and without getting uh, into some curse words. Um, but, I'd much rather prefer, you know, the last three years to have been all about the football, but it's not. Yeah. Um, there's been so much going on, but I just, I love being involved, Scott. It, it's, uh, I, I love and breathe and, and sleep football. Um, and it's just, a, it's, a, it's a drug to me and it's something that I need in my life. And I'm just, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. And I've learned a lot over the three years as a young manager. And hopefully I can keep on learning and improving, you know, and, and, that being said, you know, results will tell. That, that, that will be the proof in the pudding. But as I say, hopefully come the end of this this season, you know, we'll be in a positive position where, where I've improved, you know, my skill set and that the team are getting results more often than not. 
Yeah, definitely. Obviously, before your management career, you had a really good career as a player. You started off your career at Aberdeen. What was your kind of memories breaking through there and then obviously getting into the first team where you had a good spell? Um, God, memories at Aberdeen, just proud. Right, I mean, my memories at the time, obviously, short-term memory, you know, you don't appreciate what you've got. That's mm. that's that's for sure. And, you know, I've never been shy of talking about my regrets at Aberdeen in the first half of my career. But right now, you know, where I sit, very proud to have represented such a huge club within yeah. Scottish and European history. To be honest, that's, you know, I captained the club as well, um, which was a huge honour, even just for a short period. But to be held in that regard, you know, I, won't, I don't think I'll go down as <laughs> one of the best captains in the world, you know, in terms of what I achieved as a player at Aberdeen. But, you know, it doesn't matter. Nobody can take that away from me. And it's still yeah. a proud moment for me personally. Um, so, just, as I say, hugely proud and honoured to have been at a club like Aberdeen. Uh, reality was and is that, you know, I just wasn't quite good enough to be, you know, that, that sort of high-level player for Aberdeen. But there's no shame in that, you know, it, it is what it is. And we all find we're ceiling at some point. But what I've learned is the good habits and, you know, what it takes to be at that level and beyond that level. So, you know, hopefully if I can, if I can take some of those lessons that I've learned and pass them on, I can, I can help improve other people's, other young players' careers and give them that direction. Yeah, definitely. Before we touch on the kind of rest of your career, we'll touch on your, your team you've picked for the best team of players you've played with. First and foremost, are you putting yourself in the team? I, I'll put myself in the team. It's no through, no, nothing, no vanity in it or anything like that, but if I'm going to play with a team... And I'm going to pick it and it's going to be my best ever. I think I'd quite like to be involved. I'd still love to be playing the news, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say I'd like to be involved with it if it was playing, you know, so I definitely. Brilliant. And what's your formation? What's it? Uh, no, I've got sort of old school 4 4 2. Um, and the first one I'm going to start with goes Scotland legend Jim Lee. Okay. So, Brilliant. Um, I was, again, I'm lucky enough to share a part with Jim. Um, Terrible kicker of the ball. I might, have just, I might have just been a wee bit better than him at kicking. He'd probably argue different. Um, but to have shared that part with somebody with 90-plus caps, and it, and all it, it was latterly in his career, you know, it wasn't early on. It, by this time, he retired for international duty. and It might have even been his last season as a, as a pro, but yeah. just an unbelievable work ethic and a high, high-class goalkeeper. You know, after that... Peter Kiar came into Aberdeen, who was number two to Schmeichel for yeah. a or so. So, you know, no shortage of quality in the goalkeeping area. I could have went with a lot of them. You know, I've played with Alan McGregor, David Priest, uh, the list is Alan Main, the list is on. I've missed yeah. anybody, apologies. But for me, Jim Layton stacks up as the best, you know. So we've got Jim Layton in next. We'll move into your defence. We'll start off with right back. Who have you got at right back? I've got my managerial phone enemy in League Two, Gary Irvin at Forfa. Okay. So Gary's obviously somebody I played with, you know, I was a really close, close bond with Gary when we played together. I mean, we're no bosom buddies off the park. We got on really well. Um, but you know, what we did, we did a really good relationship on the park. He was, he's, he's a bit, a wee bit like myself. He's got a mad side to his nature, you know, a crazy side to his nature, but just a terrific lad. And the season we won the league with St. Johnson, you know, he was, for me, probably player of the year and um, just a you know a fantastic professional. Brilliant. We'll move on to left back. Who have you got in there? I've got another St. Johnson teammate in there, and um, that's um, Goran Stanich. Okay. Uh, Goran, you know, he, he was I mean, Macedonian um, international, just a cultured, cultured player, a lovely player in the eye, you know, and he wasn't your typical warrior if you like you know Scottish warrior um, but I mean just a terrific technician um, a one day left foot and, and, and an absolute gentleman an absolute gentleman but he had a wee bit of devilment as well you know he was yeah. a winner and that's that's important to have in any team yeah definitely we'll move into centre back obviously you're, you're covering one of the positions are you playing at left side or right side um, I'll slide over to the left because you always play your best players in their best position. So I'll have the better right back, uh, the right centre back at right centre back. So I'll, I'll just I'll be a shirt follower on the left. Uh, the less said about me, the better. But on my right will be my captain at Aberdeen will be Big Russell Anderson. Um, okay. Same Goran was near warrior. I tell you, if, you know Russell makes up for two or three of them. Um, brave as a lion, hard hard as nails in the tackle. Um, and, you know, 
played with Derek White at, at Aberdeen and Derek was very vocal as a captain and um, was a leader, you know, but Russell was a leader by his performance, you know, wasn't he as vocal as other players I'd played with, but by God did he lead my Saturday, you know, he's he's one of those players at three o'clock every Saturday, you could hang your hat on and you knew exactly what he was going to give, which was no less than 100%. Um, and by the way, he wasn't he lacking for ability either. Yeah. Yeah. He was a good, good player. And unfortunately, I don't think any of us have ever seen how good Russell could be due to, I think, two or three cruciate mm-hmm. knee injuries, you know, that, that helped, that kept him out for a, a long, long period of time. But to show the strength he did to come back after each one as well and still play at the level shows, you know, the calibre of player he really was. But, but you know, a terrific player. Brilliant. So that's the defence all sorted, a really good defence so far. We'll touch about in those seven years you had at St. Johnson. Obviously, you won the league, won the Challenge Cup. It was a really successful spell. What to you was kind of the favourite memories for that time? Oh, there was a lot. I mean, we just did such a such a good camaraderie amongst the squad. Uh, there, was, there was players there, you know. Jody Morris had come up for England. You know, Derek McInnes had taken over for Owen Coyle, who had a real successful spell. I mean, Owen came in. My first memories at St John's were actually pretty poor. You know, I was yeah. I played a part in a team that got John Connolly the sack. Um, and when I, you know, it's not a it's not a proud memory to be honest. I, th- I think we let John down. He was a St Johnson legend, and uh, there was a few players there, including myself, that let him down at that time. But moving on to Owen Coyle, Owen Coyle really reinvigorated the yeah. whole club and brought an energy and an enthusiasm, uh, and that. And for then on in, you know, it's it's went for success to success to success. I mean. Uh, you know, Derek brought the club up, you know, with a good two or three years consolidating the Premier League, a couple of good cup runs within that. And then obviously for then on in, up until last season, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's been a bit of a fairy tale. So, but I nod, tremendous memories. Brilliant. We'll touch a bit on your time as well when you went to Dunfermline. You spent a bit of time in Dunfermline where, obviously, after the famous St. Johnson, what stuck out there? Obviously, we won the league again. So, yeah. I mean, that, that was a great memory. I just, you know, at that, at that time for me, my time at St. Johnson, I'd been out injured, came back, the team had moved on, to be honest, and sometimes you've got to accept that. You know, I was captain at St. Johnson. Um, I came back, and as I say, the period of time that I'd out, quite long, and just had to find a new challenge. The firm fitted the bill, and it was just the overall memory. You know, I was very well received with the fans. I'm still well received when I get back. And it's just fond memories uh, of everything. You know, Jimmy McIntyre, the manager, teammates, new guys that I'd met, uh, Rejo Cardo, David Graham, all these boys, Austin McCann, Gary Mason, um, you know, so it was just a, just big Martin Hardy who had played with for a number of years at St. Johnson was also the book sale. so just a number of, number of things, just was overall memory of them firm and just so fun. Brilliant. Obviously when you left the firm as well, we spent a bit of time at Morton, what was, what was that like before you went to America? Um, oh, it was good. Um, went to Morton to be honest, I was, only, I think I was 31, I was thinking of chucking it. I had a lot of bad injuries. I was yeah. actually advised to chuck it when I was 25 with a bad ankle injury. And I played on, and it, to be honest, I was in a lot of pain a lot of the time from then on in. Although, listen, you know yourself, Scott, you, you want to play football. No. You know what I mean? And we just, as much, we love, we love playing it. We don't like the pain the next day, but it all seems worth it at the time. But I probably should have retired a bit earlier. Um, but as I say, my love for the, the game and trying to appreciate maybe the years that I could put in it for then on in is what, what kept me going. And at Morton, you know, I was I was I spoke to Murray and I'd sort of say to him, Listen, Murray, I'm, I'm one injury away, you know, no no any injury, like any significant injury. Done my knee the first three weeks of the season. <laughs> and uh, it was sort of, you know, it, it taught the one thing I would say the club looked after me tremendously well. The knee wasn't as bad, I just needed a wee bit of cartilage taken away. And I got back after six weeks. I scored in my comeback game. And we went on to really have a, a really successful season in actual fact. We finished second to Partick. And mm-hmm. I, I loathe to say it, but Partick were the better side and deserved to get to the Premier League. But, you know, we had some... It was just a real good check. You had Big Martin Hardy, Mark McLaughlin, Peter McDonald, Peter Witherspoon. Kind of, it was like... I mean, we were playing Morton football while the rest of the young teams were in about us were playing, playing proper football. But what we were was a battle-hardened kind yeah. of full of wrinkles and, you know, full of wrinkles and nice bunk. It was just, <laughs> yeah. Aye, we were all dried up, you know. It was, <laughs> but that uh, was a terrific, terrific season just to be involved in with the, with the lads and we, Murray, and, and Big, 
uh, Mark, you know, were brilliant to work with. And it was just, again, you know, fond memories of the place. And that's, I've been lucky. You know, I have been lucky in that respect. I've always had quite a good rapport with, with clubs and fans. And, and you know, as uh, you know, there'll be a lot of fans that don't like me or, or, or seen me play and <laughs> never like me. But and the majority of the time, you know, I've always had a decent rapport with people and um, I've always been honest and approached the game. And I think that stands you in good stead. You know, you get, you get up and then people see that at the end of the day, you know, and that's what you're judged on. Yeah, definitely. The move to America, how did that come about when you went to Carolina? Um, just, just, they just asked if I'd be interested, to be honest. I, I was meant to go earlier on in the season. Uh, and I'd weighed up, you know, it was a great opportunity. You know, something yeah. different. As I say, for a player who probably should have been retired, I thought this really is last chance saloon to yeah. maybe just experience a different flavour. Uh, Morton blocked it initially because we were in the heat of battle with party to win the league. But mm-hmm. uh, Murray had said to me, you know, listen, if they come back in, uh, if the opportunity is still there for you to go and the league's decided, you know, we, we would do everything we can. And, and, and Carolina... You know, they were true to their word. They said they would come back in, and they did as soon as the league was sort of party beat us 1 0 midweek for Hull. I think it was about 10,000. Great queuing mm-hmm. up to get, you know, great atmosphere, great game. Unfortunately, we were in the 1 0 defeat, which really just about secured the title for party. Um, and I think it was within two or three days, Carolina were back in touch with Morton and myself, and the rest is history. You know, I, I took the plunge, and, and uh, I was in my you know, far better professional for it. I learned a lot in America. Brilliant. We'll move on to your midfield. Obviously, you're going with a four-man midfield. Who have we got at right side? Who's in the right side of midfield? I'll start. Can I start on my left side? It's just, I've, got, I've got a question mark on my right side now. So right, OK. I'm going to make a 11th hour decision like I did on Saturday. <laughs> so, um, so on my, on my left, I'm going to start with ex-Aberdeen and St. Johnson teammate Paul Sheeran. OK. Now a manager yeah. at Falkirk, yeah. I, I mean, again, partly that's because I've got Goran at left back. The relationship the two of them had with each other yeah. is unbelievable. Um, and both of them could land a, a ball on a sixpence for 100 yards. I mean, they were a joy to play with. Peanuts is ultimate professional, um, thorough in everything he does, gives you everything, understanding tactically, technically, just a bit of a joke. I'm sure he won't mind me saying it. He didn't need a half yard of pace. He probably needed about four yards of pace. But it was, uh, I mean, it was uh, unbelievable, just incredible. But um, and if he did have pace, I, I don't know what level Paul Sheeran yeah. would have played it. Honestly, it was just phenomenal. So that would have either been my left side before that. Do you think he's got potential to be a good manager? Oh, I, I mean, I've, there's no many people I hold in higher regard than Derek McInnes. Um, mm-hmm. and, and Paul's obviously been a successful manager already. We are both. Mm-hmm. And he's been out and he's, he's learned from me under one of the, the top managers in Scotland over the past decade. And, you know, there'll be a lot of Aberdeen fans over the last eight years. They might feel a bit spoiled in five years' time, you know. Mm-hmm. And I hope, I've got, as I say, I, I hope Stephen Glass is hugely successful. I hope all my clubs do well. My ex football club, sorry. Um, and I hope Stephen does well there. But Aberdeen were in the top three for the last eight seasons. They were in numerous cup finals and had Derek no ran into a pretty unstoppable Celtic time in a, in a period. He might have had two or three more trophies mm-hmm. under his time at Aberdeen. So, you know, I think overall his journey at Aberdeen was hugely successful. Paul's obviously learned a lot in that time, how to deal with high-profile players, how to approach a high-profile elite club. Um, and certainly when you get into League One, I think Falk up, tick all the boxes. So I think he's got everything in his locker and he's probably done as much grounding as he can possibly do in terms of education. So... Yeah. You know, obviously, I wish him all the best, but I've got huge, huge confidence that he can can become a top manager. Brilliant. We'll move into centre midfield. We'll start with your left sided centre midfielder. Who's in there? I'm going to go with Big Martin Hardy, okay. uh, teammate of mine at St Johnson, uh, Big Mad Mental, as they call him. <laughs> um, teammate of mine at Dunfermline, Morton, and helped me initially, Sterling Albi, as assistant manager. Yeah. Again, you know, a warrior, but under underappreciated for his ability. You know, a lot of people think of Martin Hardy just as a, you know, a big battering ram with one headers, strong in the tackle. Uh, so much more to his game. You know, he was he was a great technician. Could play right right foot, left foot. Could play right across the four in the midfield. You know, you could put him left and bring Paul Sheeran in, and 
start playing diagonal balls to Martin. Uh, physical presence, obviously. Um, but I uh, and, and a terrific player, and a terrific person you have in your changing room, just a winner. So yeah. he would he would certainly play on the left side of that centre mid. Brilliant. Who partners him on the right hand side? We draw the Morris. Uh, okay. one large will go away there. Um, so I uh, just we draw they just, you know, who's class, who's technique and game management, could slow a game down, could speed it up. Um technician, but tactically very, very, very cute. Um but just I uh, I mean, as I say, but, there's a few in there that you know I thought about, um, but but Jody for me just just edges it. Probably played under himself was you know in a championship to win it. Um, you know, was a good Premier League player down in England in his day, but you know he certainly he certainly brought something to the Premier League when he came in with St Johnson and was a big part of helping the club sort of stabilise and consolidate there. So he goes he goes on to my my centre midfield percent big help. Yeah, Jody Morris is obviously another guy who's been on to have a, a really good coaching career. Obviously, spent time with Frank Lampard at uh, Chelsea. Do you think he's, he's, he could go on and be a top manager as well? Oh, I mean, again, just education wise, I mean, second to none. You know, he's, yeah. he's, he was very successful with the, the under 23s at Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, he wouldn't mind me saying he had a strong pull to pick for <laughs> um, but, but I mean, he's, I mean, he's done a stint there, obviously, at Derby, and then latterly with Chelsea. So again, dealing with the high profile players, knowing what it takes to, to coach these players on a daily basis. He's networking for, for scouting and all that must be huge now. Um, it was a lot of attraction for me about Jody, you know, and hopefully the opportunities sort of arise for him. Um, and hopefully that he can he can then turn them into something, you know, tangible and, and get himself a, a managerial career. But I've, I've got absolutely no doubt, given his knowledge, given his, his upbringing in football, that he can be a huge success as a coach. Brilliant. We'll move into the right midfield. This is a you've you've built this up as a really tough decision. Who are we who are we going with? I'm going to go with wee Midge Muller, wee Chris Muller. Okay. Um, no, you're no 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 as technical as Paul Sheeran, um, but just one of the one of the fittest fittest lads you know you, you would ever come across. A, a true true professional. I've used that a lot, but mm-hmm. he is the epitome of a true football and professional. Um, terrific player. Gives you absolutely everything. Leaves, leaves nothing on the park. Um, but again, you know, interchangeable. You could slide them into the middle. Um, you know, you, you could probably play them left, actually. Um, it was all right for a wee guy. He became a bit of stick in his first season. He was brought as a goal scorer in midfield. I don't think he scored his first goal ways until January, February. But but again, he went on to prove how good he was. You know, he just wasn't there a one or two year player. He was at St. Johnson for, it must have been nearly a decade, you know, and every year get more successful than the last. So, yeah. again, just a player that showed through professionalism, through ability and quality that longevity can be achieved. And he did that and he played hundreds of games for them, for St. Johnson. And it was a success at every club he was at. Um, and now, still playing, still kicking about the East Coast, right? With a captain's right. armband on. Uh, but uh, he, he would he would prop up the right side there. Um because it was such a tough decision, he probably my first sub half after sixty minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, aye. So, aye, so yeah. that, that completes your midfield. A really good midfield as well. The team's looking really good. We'll touch a bit in the kind of rest of your playing career. Obviously, you went down to the juniors with Blantyre and then Arvin Meadow. Was that more a case of kind of continuing to play a bit of football plus kind of learning the kind of coaching aspects of the game? No, my wee mate, Davy Gregg, who yeah. spoke to, he used to get me Davy in the taxi a lot when I was younger. He used to pick me up for two and take me home when I was drunk. <laughs> uh, so, no, nah, Davy had phoned me and he just, Davy's another guy. He's just, he's all football, you know, he's, he's a terrific football person. Um, and, he, and he just, he, he phoned me up and said, listen, would you come in and, and help us out, the planter? Um, it's a short period. David then got a move to Irvin Meadow and it, it was much the same. He just, he wanted me to come in and help out, partially as a player, partially as a coach. And, and I did it because, you know, I, I just I wanted to stay involved with football. And, and that's really, I was out of the game totally for a year at that point. And, and just getting involved with Davey and other guys when I put him just helped me, helped reignite what I really wanted to do and refocus me. Um, I, I'd been in a stage where my, my partner, my wife, was moving over for, for Carolina. So it yeah. was kind of... That year was spent getting all that did. Mm-hmm. So it was important then on after that, you know, we started to just sort of, you know, just get, get me focused for myself and football. And so the opportunity came at the right time. Yeah. Um, but never turn my nose up at any game of football, to be honest. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not proud. I go and play with my mates in the park. They were playing the morning night. 
um, get a 10 20 mile going with the jackets you know? <laughs> uh, 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 bye so that, I mean that was it so it just came at the right time it was good yeah. to get back in it, and it, as you say gave me a wee bit of eye in the coaching side as well yeah definitely then you obviously spent about a bit of time at Clyde and then Peter Murphy asked you to go to Annan when did you first can I get the the idea that you could move on to coaching and how did when did Peter Murphy can I give you the word about going to Annan with him um, I mean the, the, I on coaching was, was very early in my career. I was right. always of the opinion that, I mean, I found it quite early in my career. I became accepted that I was never going to be the, the top player that I'd wanted to be. Uh, just didn't have the ability, but always thought in the back of my head, there's nothing stopping me from becoming a top coach. Yeah. Um, and that's still how I feel, you know, and I've got a long, long, long way to go, but I'm going to work tirelessly to get there if I can. Yeah, um, I helped Hamish French with under 19s at Dunfermline. I actually went into Air United um, with Marco Roberts and I'd, I'd, I'd sort of went into play a couple of games for him because he was just down in bodies. Peter Murphy was there at the time. So mm-hmm. that was my first introduction with Peter. Uh, we Mark, Roberts must, Mark Roberts must be an interesting character for you to be involved with. He's, he's as mad as me, to be fair. <laughs> uh, his part's rubbish and all. So if you ever get him on, tell him. Oh, we've had him on. We've, we've had him on. He's a <laughs> kind of cult hero. That's, so this channel. But... He's, He's, uh, he's class, he's, again, fat ball boy, loves it. Aye. Um, but aye, so that's when I met Peter. We were on with a licence together, and, and at the time the shoe just fitted, you know, Peter yeah. knew that I was, at that time I was doing a bit of scouting work uh, with Mirren, with Jack Ross and uh-huh. Jamie Fowler. Um, and so that scouting work led to the, the next progression, you know, and Peter offered me that opportunity. So that was it really, and it just, everything just snowballed, fell into place. And then, then I knew I was really on that pathway to being where I wanted to be. Um, and it was just about knuckling down, working hard, trying to get better every day, every time I seen the boys and trying to put on sessions and learn about myself and learn about coaching as I went. Brilliant. We'll finish up your team. Obviously, there's two striking positions still to fill. Who is the left-sided striker? Who can who? Well, I'm going to go with It's 4-4-2, 4-4-1-1. Right. right? Um, and I, I, I just, I couldn't even have Jess in the team. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, mean, I played, played with Scott Booth as well at Aberdeen, played with Billy Dodds at Aberdeen, Robbie Winters, Arold Stavrum. I mean, Arold Stavrum, I wouldn't, wouldn't say Arold was in the bracket, the ones I've mentioned, but he did get goals. Um, you know, but for me, one guy that was just a wee he sham zero alley as well, you know, who's yeah. sadly passed away yeah. since, but Ian Jess for me was just, I mean, I don't, I don't. Looking back, now, I don't know if anybody ever found his best position, mm-hmm. but I, I would. I'm going to have him just off the striker, uh, sort of being that link to the team. You know, just that that freedom. You know, to to roam and probe and and go on the board. He just did everything. You know, he two feet. He could arrive in the box. He could strike for distance. He could create chances. He could score chances. Wasn't he shy at tackle either? He wasn't just off there. Uh, he'd have a wee bit of, you know, he was a strong boy as well, strong in body. And for me, just oh. Very close to being the complete player. Um, I was maybe a bit young at the time to, to, to recognise maybe what held him back to being that complete player. I don't know. But, I mean, just he just got to be in my team. Just yeah. phenomenal. phenomenal. Definitely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think he's probably one of the most underrated players in the past kind of 30 years. But, yeah, Ian, yes, what a player he was. Who is the man leading the line? Who's the man that plays in front of Jess? The guy there that I'm going to have, and again, I, apologies, you know, for anybody that I've left out, but I'm, I'm going to go with Jason Scotland. Okay. Uh, Jace for me, he used to, you know, he used to turn up on a Saturday and he was just, you know, five minutes of magic buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just that. But, and it was, you know, yeah. he just, he would turn up and there was just moments that people couldn't live with him. And it was boom, boom, boom. And it was almost right, that's me, get me off. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we were in season, he was phenomenal. He, he was electric when he was on it. Um, so powerful, so quick. And, and I just think it would complement, you know, Ian very well there. And I think Ian's vision and sort of, you know, techniques and passing ability would just see the best, see the best of Jace there. But, but I just, I mean, he was, and he was a great guy. You know, he was that kind of, he had that sort of laid back Trinidadian kind of, you know, way about him. But, but also, you know, he wanted to win, wanted mm-hmm. to win everything that he took part in. And he's obviously spent a few years at Hamilton coaching. He left just recently. Striker coach, so somebody else is dipping their clothes into the, the coaching game. And uh, but I just a great lad and a, a phenomenal player. Brilliant. What a team that is. Is there any players just before we get into the last kind of wee bit? Is there any players that you felt just were unlucky just to make the team? 
Um, oh, that was too many. There's mm-hmm. too many to mention. I, I, I mean, I had a great season with Stuart McCaffrey at centre half. Big Marco McLaughlin, I've mentioned earlier. Peter McDonald up front. I've got me David Graham and Joe Cardo in the wide areas. You know that I could have picked. Um, Gary Mason at Dunfermline was yeah. so under, so underrated. Um, but a, you know, a great player in there. Um, I it does. There's just Kevin McNaughton. I mean, how I've no pick Kevin McNaughton in there, you know, I sort of want to change it already. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we Summer was unbelievable. And there was a few there, you know, that I played at. Fergus Tierman was a, was a mm-hmm. great player, you know, and should have should have played at a higher level, you know, retired early just because he wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, there's, there's loads. I mean, listen, the one thing I would say, if I could pick a team that I could play with for a season again, it would be the under-19 team at Aberdeen. Right. So that would be every one of them. And Ryan S. Ningle, Kevin McNaughton, Kevin Mullen, Phil McGuire, Derek Young, Darren Mackey, Fergus Tiernan, uh, Boulder Bet, Callum Bet. I mean, just, and there was more. I mean, that we won two leagues in a row, and I've said. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. But uh, just before we, we wrap up, obviously, yeah, game tomorrow against Albion Robles. What's the, what's the thoughts going into that? Tough game. Uh, five extra when Albion players coming for last year. Um, so they're going to have a wee point to prove and so are we you know um, but I know it, listen it's got to be a every game in League 2 is de- decided by such fine margins um, and, and I don't expect this one's going to be any different um, it, there's just no one easy game mm-hmm. but you know it's, as I say it's such fine lines between success and failure uh, in this league as it is in every league and, um, but I'm expecting Albion to come all guns blazing for us but you'll be going all guns blazing for them as well. So I'm expecting a, a tough old game, but hopefully we can sneak it. Brilliant. Kevin, it's been an absolute pleasure to you on the show, mate. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much and best of luck for the season ahead. Take care, buddy. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. Brilliant. Cheers.